Hi, it's Hope and welcome to the video. This, as you can tell by the title and the thumbnail, is going to be my December wrap up and stats. So it's weird that I'm doing this. Um, it doesn't feel like it should be January, but it is. I actually filmed my 2022 stats in general earlier today and that was bizarre to think that I was filming that. But this, I'm going to keep it really quick and simple since I am very low energy and honestly not doing the best mentally today, but I really wanted to get this filmed so that I can get it up for you guys to kind of kick off the end of year content um, in my next video. So first we will go into the stats um, that I have on my laptop and then we'll go into the books that I read in December. Also, I'm going to apologize if it sounds like I'm talking a bit quieter. I am... I usually don't like to film when either of my parents are home, but my mom's home, so I'm trying to just keep a little bit quieter so that just, yeah, like in general, but, but I will pop up the graphic here of what I read and all that, of like the stats. Um, so in December, I read 19 books, which totaled up to 6,159 pages, and my average star rating was four stars, which pretty good. Um, I listened to two audiobooks, read 12 ebooks, read two mix, which basically means I read it more than one format, and only three physical. For genres, I read one contemporary, three erotic, five fantasy, two paranormal, and eight romances. And for age ranges, I read nine adult, one middle grade, seven new adult, and two young adult. Honestly, that two young adult really shocked me. Like, I was looking at the stats, I'm like, there's no way I only read two. Um, yep, I did. Um, this is the lowest month I think I've ever read for, like, young adult. It's usually, like, oh, maybe, like, a third is young adult. But nope, in, um, December it was two. So now going into the actual books themselves, I'm probably not going to go into too much detail about these. Um... But yeah, we'll start off with the first book I started and finished this month is All I Want for Christmas is You by Adora Crooks. I read this for Clipmas and this is basically a MMF um, contemporary romance. It's a novella where basically we're following um, these three characters. I cannot remember any of their fucking names. Um, and it's them a few days before Christmas going to this concert and then them kind of dealing with the aftermath of one of the characters going into kidney failure and it, it definitely has that like hard hittingness of like oh you're not sure whether the one character is going to live or die um but it was a nice romance and just the dynamic between the three characters I really liked uh, again I can't remember the names off the top of my head um I did end up giving this 3.5 stars uh, the next book I read is Gifting Me to His Best Friend by Katie Robert. This was a reread. This is an erotic novella where basically we're following Emma and Grayson and they every year go on vacation with Grayson's best friend Derek and it's clear that there is some attraction between like Emma and Derek but also Grayson and Derek and so basically Grayson ends up gifting Emma to Derek for like Christmas and it's just a fun smutty Christmas and I really enjoyed it. I gave it four stars. It's definitely my favorite Christmas smutty novella um, that I've read ever and so of course I had to reread it for Clipmas. Then I read Queen Takes Rose by Katie Robert, another Katie Robert book, um, and I gave this 3.5 stars. This is a kind of like Sleeping Beauty retelling where basically you have Aurora and Malef Maleficent, but Melissa Maleficent oh my god, why am I not able to speak, goes by a different name, um, Malone, and is a dark romance. It is basically like Disney After Dark. It is like smutty, dark. Um, there's a kink club. It's really good. Uh, I gave it 3.5 stars because I just found myself not connecting with the characters that much, um, but the smut was really good. And then I read Melt For Us by Molly Doyle. This is the um, like Christmas novella in the um, Order of the Unseen series, you'll see another one we mentioned uh, below, but this basically we are following Quinn and her three boys, uh, like her three partners, um, on like a Christmas vacation, and it's smutty, and it's dark, um, I gave it four stars, um, 
because it was really good. It was dark. Um, it didn't blow me away like Scream for Us, which is the first book in the series, which basically is Quinn meeting these guys and fucking them on Halloween. And now it's her fucking them on Christmas. And yeah, I enjoyed it. And then the next three books I'm just going to talk about uh, together because I read them back to back to back. And that is Him by Serena Bowen and Al Kennedy, Us by Serena Bowen and Al Kennedy, and Epic by Serena Bowen and Al Kennedy. This is the, like, Him. It's a duet and then there's like a bonus novella. But this basically we follow um, Jamie and Wes and they used to be friends at this like hockey summer camp um, from like I don't know like age like 13 to 18 but then something happens when they're 18 at the summer camp and they don't speak to each other for about four years. They go their separate ways and do their separate hockey careers and then they go like face to face like they compete in the the same championship and one of them loses and that kind of re not rekindles but they like see each other for the first time in about four years and then they end up going back to this summer camp that they went to to become coaches um and then a relationship sparks from there i really enjoyed it i gave um him five stars um and then us and epic i both gave four stars you will see that this will be on my top books of the year list. I fucking loved it every second of it. Um, Clint, thank you so much for this recommendation because I literally probably think about it at least once a day. These characters just flash my flash in my mind or I think about it even just for a second. Um, so yeah, definitely loved it. Definitely one of my favorite books that I read in December. Um, so yeah. Then I read Raven's Reckoning by Charlie Nottingham. This is a uh, like Paranormal uh, Why Choose. Uh, it's the third book in the Raven's Cry series. I think that's what it's called. Um, and this basically, we're in the first book, which is Raven's Cry, we are following Rain, who is a witch, and she ends up getting hired by this vampire named Ezra to basically like put spells on his estate to like protect it. Um, and the two of them end up kind of falling into a relationship. But Rain also kind of likes her best friend Graham and then um, Ezra has an entire has a boyfriend who is a fucking vampire necromancer and oh my god I fucking love him. Uh, that's not the point of this uh, but this I gave four stars. I really enjoyed it. Um, Raven's Reckoning is the third book in the series so we are dealing with the aftermath of the first two books and there's a whole thing about Rain's brother who in the first book uh this isn't really a spoiler um is dead but now you learn more about him and all of that and I really liked it um definitely really smutty really kinky I fucking loved it um I need the fourth book like um the second I finished uh this book because it left off on a huge cliffhanger and, and I'm so excited to continue with the series when the next book comes out then the next book I read is A Light in the Flame by Jennifer L. Armitrout this is the uh, second book in the Flash and Fire series. The first book is A Shadow in the Ember, which is literally right there. Um, and this is a new adult fantasy romance. In the first book, uh, we are following Sarah, who basically, uh, from birth, she has been destined to fall in love with the primal of death and kill him. And it's part of this bigger grand scheme of things. Um, and yeah, this is the continuation where we are learning more about the world, more about the um political aspects more about the just everything and the romance is definitely heavy and present in this and I fucking love this book I gave it five stars it's I do think I prefer the first one just a tiny bit more but I'm so excited for the third book that comes out next December like I need it um like yesterday um so very excited for that I love everything in this world and just overall because this is a part of the bigger scheme of a world, uh, like the Blood and the From Blood and Ash series um, is also in this world. So I, I just fucking love this series and I'm trash for it. <laughs> the next book I read is The Last Olympian by Rick Riordan. This was the November pick for, um, like, this was the November book for The Riordan Along, which is a read-along that I co-host with Morgan from Morgan's Bookshelves. 
Um, and this is the final book in the uh, Percy Jackson and the Olympian series, which basically in the first book, The Lightning Thief, we're following 12-year-old Percy Jackson who discovers that he is a demigod, which basically is the child of a god and a mortal, and he ends up going to Camp Half-Blood, which is a camp for half-bloods. It is in the title. Um, and yeah, and we follow him on this, on these like quests and overall there's this giant prophecy and I love this I gave it four stars it's bittersweet that we're that I that we read that I read this and that it is the final book in this series and we're moving on we're moving on to the Kane Chronicles which I'll leave the announcement video for the like part two of the Ride Run Along which starts in January here where we're reading um like we're starting the Kane Chronicles and I'm so excited for that um but yeah the next book I read is From Lukov with Love uh, by Mariana Zapata. This, I give 4.5 stars. I really enjoyed it. This, basically, we are following Jasmine, who is a fi figure skater. She's 26, so she's kind of nearing the end of her career. And when she gets offered to uh, join the, like, doubles um, with her sworn enemy, Ivan Lukov, she reluctantly agrees because it will get her back on the ice, back into competition, and overall help her career but hating turns to something more and I really enjoyed it it was a slow burn romance I equally love and equally hate slow slow burn but Mariana Zapata somehow makes it so that I just I can't help but root for them no matter how much I hate them like I didn't like Jasmine in the beginning but by the end I loved her I was honestly in love with Ivan and his broody self from page one from like the moment he was mentioned um so yeah I'm really excited to read more of Mariana Zapata books um I know that in the next month or two me and my friend Mac will be body reading um another Mariana Zapata book so I'm really excited for that the next book I read is Bloodshed by Molly Doyle which is the book that takes place in between Scream for Us and Melt for Us which I mentioned earlier and basically it's following like what happens after Halloween night leading up to Melt for Us like Christmas um, and you're learning more about the characters and more about the dynamics and you're it's really dark really gritty it involves like gangs cults um really dark really fucked up I gave it four stars it was pretty good um I'm really excited to continue on with the series I didn't realize it was going to be more than just the three books so imagine my surprise when I get to the end of the book and I'm just like wait there's more so I'm so so excited for Bloodbath um which is the next book in the series which takes place after Melt for Us um whenever that comes out I think sometime in 2023 here but who knows then I read An Incarnation of Shadow and Light by S.A. Christensen this was sent to me by the author back in November to review I started it and I didn't continue it until December here but this basically um we are in a world where there are few people that are called incarnates and they're basically like the sun and the moon um and they kind of have powers based on night and day and basically there ends up being um there's like power struggles in like politically um we are following a uh, Zoe and Gabriel and they are the sun and the moon of this one country and basically um Nicholas who is from a different country basically comes in being a moon and that trips people up and then there's um Silji who is like an assassin mercenary that joins the crew um and just shit happens it's very political it's it's a new adult fantasy um and I gave this three stars it was real it was good it was just the pacing was slow at times I will definitely say I absolutely loved Gabriel and his entire character and his entire arc. I honestly, without him, I would have probably DNF'd this book. Um, but yeah, like I would recommend it. Like it is a good book. I just found the pacing and the characters just to be a little lacking. Then I read Seducing My Guardian by Katie Robert. This basically we are following. I don't fucking remember the main character's name. Um, oops. Uh, but basically, uh, when she was 16, her parents passed away. So she ended up, um, 
under the guardianship of one of her dad's friends who she's never met and it's now nine years later and she she's been attracted to him this entire time but now that she's 25 her trust is now in her control and not his there's nothing that ties him to being her guardian um like in the past so they agree to have one night of very smutty fun and the rest is history and i gave this four stars i did really enjoy it um it was definitely better than i thought it was going to be um and again i just love everything by katie robert the next book i finished was a destiny of dragons by tj clune this i had been reading it since fucking august literally it took me four months to read and i gave it four stars it was good i just it's just the kind of thing that I rushed into reading it. I was like, okay, I was reading it for a, um, like, read-along that ultimately ended up getting, like, cancelled because everybody else was kind of struggling. And it's a good book. Basically, in the first book, The Lightning Struck Heart, we are following Sam, who is a uh, wizard apprentice. And um, it is this really weird world. We have a unicorn. Uh, well, we have a gay unicorn named Gary, a half-giant named Tiggy um there ends up being a dragon and just it's just it's just really funny very chaotic world and I love it it's just I don't know why I just it took me so long to read it but every single moment I was reading it I was loving it so I think it's one of those things of like oh yeah I just shouldn't have started it when I did but I did finish it which I'm really grateful for and uh, you know I've already mentioned three Katie Robert books um there's a fourth that I've read in December um which is The Kraken Sacrifice which basically we follow Catalina who makes a deal with a demon named Azazel basically in exchange for seven years of um her life to the I'm gonna call it the monster realm I don't know exactly what it's called um she will end up getting anything she wants and so she agrees to do these seven years and she ends up getting paired um chosen by the like kraken king kraken lord whatever the fuck he's called to do her service under him um and yeah and so then you're following catalina and the kraken king named thane and their romance uh so yes um monster porn basically um yeah there was a lot of tentacles uh i gave it three stars because while the smut with said tentacles was good i just didn't the characters kind of fell flat and i did really enjoy it like i don't regret reading it but it was definitely just a i wish the characters had a little bit more connection and a little bit more personality i felt like it lacked a little bit but otherwise i did enjoy it um when in doubt, I will read anything Katie Robert writes. Hell, I'll read her fucking grocery list at this point because there's only been one book by hers that I didn't like. And I've read way too many of her books at this point. I think this year alone I read 17. So, um, yeah. But moving on, um, I read Heat Wave by TJ Klune. This is the third and final book in the Extraordinary series. So yay, I finished off a series. Um, and this basically in the first book, uh, The Extraordinaries, we follow a uh, 16 year old Nick who he is obsessed with Extraordinaries. Extraordinaries are basically people with superpowers and we see him um, obsess over these superheroes. Uh, he writes fan fiction about some of them and i i love it um heat wave i gave five stars because it is just pure chaotic joy i love it it is just it's it has this queer found family and then there and then just family elements in general um it is just so good and um i will just quickly tell you a moment that um it makes me laugh thinking back about this book and so basically um, New Year's Eve. I am slightly tipsy and I'm laughing my ass off listening to this and my friend literally because I was muted because we were doing like sprints um, literally has to message the group chat hope are you okay because I was laughing so hard and like she honestly thought I was dying I think. Um, 
So, um, hi, Mac. Uh, sorry for scaring you that night. Um, but it was amazing. I constantly had a smile on my face or secondhand embarrassment. I just literally, I love the Extraordinary series so much. Um, and it's kind of bittersweet that I'm done with it, but there will always be a chance to reread it in the future. The next book I finished is Every Last Breath by Jennifer L. Armantrout. This I've been reading since September, as you can tell by a theme, um, finishing off books that I had been reading for a while. Um, but basically, Every Last Breath is the third book, the third and final book in the Dark Element series, uh, which is a YA paranormal, where basically we're following uh, Layla, who is um, half gargoyle, and her dealing with demons and other gargoyles and it's 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 good um to finish off this series I only need to read the prequel novella and then I'm finished with it but I was so happy to read this I gave it four stars it was good um I honestly am mad at myself for waiting so long to finish it um because I read like 70% in September and then just never continued for some reason so I'm so happy that I have it finished. Um, so yeah. And then the final book I read this year, I actually, like the final book I read in 2022, um, I actually finished it in 2023 um, because I had the last about 100 pages left. But that is Red, White, and Royal Blue by Casey McQuiston. Um, let's just say I have my fourth copy of this book is on the way. It's my absolute favorite. It's tabbed like living hell. Um, I literally have an entire tabbing system. I've annotated it three times. Uh, this basically we are following um, Alex Claremont Diaz, who is the uh, son of the President of the United States, and Henry, who is the Prince of Wales. And uh, they basically hate each other, but, at a, but after an incident at Henry's brother's wedding, where they become basically... Uh, headline news uh because of hating each other they end up having to agree to this fake friendship which turns into a real friendship and a real friendship turns into more this is my all-time favorite book um i love it so much when in doubt i love it so much um i literally could talk about it forever my friends morgan and reese can attest to it because i literally talked about it so much during my time of reading this um so yeah, it was so nice to end the year with like my comfort book. I guess end the year and start the year, but um, yeah. So those are the final books that I read in 2022. It's kind of insane. Um, so yeah, but I really hope you enjoyed this video. Let me know what is one book that you read in December or how many books you read in December. I'd really love to hear that in the comments below. Uh, but don't forget to like and subscribe. Um, it really helps my channel grow. Um, and I really hope I'll see you in my next video, which will be my 2022 stats and will kind of officially kick off my end of year, like all the things 2022 stats, top books, worst books, talking about series and all of that. I'm really excited to do this content. So I really hope that you are willing to stick around and see it. But I really hope you enjoyed this video. I think I've already said that, so bye!